The next book I read in the summer of 2024 was Cage of Souls, Adrian Tchaikovsky's 2019 fantasy sci-fi adventure novel. It's a sprawling post-apocalyptic fever dream that certainly offers occasional moments of brilliance, but really drags itself through the mud for far too long to feel completely worth the journey. It's the kind of novel that makes you suspect there's a much leaner, better novel buried inside, waiting to be liberated by a ruthless editor. It's a 600-page book that might have been spectacular at 300, but as it stands, Cage of Souls is fine. It's not great, but it's not terrible. It's a book you might recommend with caveats like it picks up by the end, or if you can slog through the slow parts, the payoff is decent. Tchaikovsky is, without a doubt, a terrifically talented author, as fans of his Children of Time series will attest. But here he takes a much different approach, one that's a lot more Gene Wolfe than Arthur C. Clarke, much more grim literary dystopia than hard sci-fi. It sort of works, except for when it doesn't, which is unfortunately often. So the story follows a man named Stefan Advani, an intellectual with some vague revolutionary leanings who finds himself banished to a brutal prison colony called the island, which is the sort of place where most people are only one bad day away from a horrific death. Tchaikovsky paints the island with all the grime and rot of a distant future where human civilization is circling the drain, and our protagonist, a self-aware, snarky misfit, is stuck right in the middle of it. The narrative is told in first person with Stefan recounting his experiences as if writing from the relative safety of the future. Stefan's journey takes him through a series of loosely connected episodic adventures, each one more strange and dangerous than the last. There are monsters in this world, both literal and metaphorical. You get your giant insects, your mutated wildlife, your decadent aristocrats, everything a ruined earth needs to feel properly broken. The core tension driving the plot is Stefan's attempts to survive in an environment designed to crush people like him, those who think too much and act too little. The first half of the book is more or less a series of loosely connected survival scenarios, avoiding the sadistic guards, negotiating alliances with fellow inmates, evading the island's various environmental and biological dangers. After a fairly brilliant introductory several chapters, this for me is where the novel begins to show its weaknesses. Every time you think the plot is about to pick up, you are dropped into another repetitive loop of prison politics and existential dread. Then about two-thirds of the way through, the story takes a sharp left turn into something more mythic and strange and, frankly, interesting. The island's true nature is revealed, and Stefan begins a trek through the wilderness beyond the prison. This is where the novel finally gathers some much-needed momentum. Stefan encounters surreal landscapes, unexpected allies, and ancient horrors, culminating in a climactic showdown that, in fairness, is genuinely exciting. Tchaikovsky can write action sequences with the best of them, and when the gears finally click into place, Cage of Souls does become hard to put down. The problem is getting there. Thematically, Cage of Souls tackles some pretty big stuff. Civilization versus barbarism, decay and renewal, the inescapability of death and the slim possibility of redemption. 
Tchaikovsky is playing in the same sandbox as other post-apocalypses. Think The Road by Cormac McCarthy or The Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe. But he's not quite operating on that same level. There's definitely ambition here, a sense that Tchaikovsky is striving to say something profound about the human condition. But the message gets muddled beneath layer upon layer of excess. The prose is dense. The world building is Baroque. And the narrative often feels like it's collapsing under the weight of its own attempted cleverness. There's also a sort of surprising bleakness to the book. This is a world where hope is a scarce resource and those who cling to it are often punished for their trouble. At times, this nihilism feels earned. We are, after all, dealing with the collapse of civilization. But at other points, it feels just a little gratuitous. With that said, there are some moments of understated tenderness here scattered throughout the gloom. The ensemble cast is full of odd, broken people, criminals, rebels, scholars, and a few of them are genuinely lovable. You will find yourself rooting for unlikely friendships and caring about the fates of characters you didn't expect to like. These relationships are the heart of the novel, and they provided just enough warmth to keep me from abandoning the book entirely. Here's the thing. Cage of Souls just doesn't need to be 600 pages long. <laughs> if there's one major flaw that drags the whole experience down, it's the sheer volume of unnecessary detail. Tchaikovsky is clearly in love with his own world building. And in all fairness, it's an impressive world, but the novel frequently loses sight of the forest for the trees. There are entire sections that could have been trimmed or cut out altogether without sacrificing anything essential to the story. In fact, you get the sense that somewhere in this bloated tome lies a brilliant 300-page novel trying to claw its way out. The core story, Stefan's journey from disillusionment to something resembling understanding, it's certainly compelling enough. The problem is that it's buried under strata of meandering subplots, overly long descriptions, and philosophical musings that only occasionally land. Tchaikovsky is a very, very good writer, but he is not immune to indulgence. And in Cage of Souls, for me, the indulgence often outweighs the substance. Despite its flaws, Cage of Souls remains just intriguing enough to keep you reading. There's a kind of hypnotic pull to the narrative, even when it's at its most frustrating. You want to know what happens next, even if you're not entirely on board with how you're getting there. And when the story finally delivers on its promise, particularly in the final showdown, I did find myself grudgingly glad I stuck with it. But is it a great book? No, it's not. But it's definitely not bad either. It's a solidly okay book. I give it three out of five stars all day. There's enough here to satisfy fans of grim, philosophical, pseudo-sci-fi, but it's unlikely to convert anyone new to the genre. If you are a patient reader who doesn't mind wading through some bloat for the occasional payoff, you're probably going to enjoy Cage of Souls. If you prefer your novels lean and tightly paced, this one will almost undoubtedly test your endurance. In my tier ranking of the books I've read in 2024, I place Cage of Souls right here at the very bottom of the It Was Okay tier. It's a book that I finished with very mixed feelings, a little tired, a little impressed, but mostly relieved. It's the epitome of okay. 
And you know what? In a world full of masterpieces and abject disasters, okay is definitely not the worst thing you can be. I still love Adrian Tchaikovsky, and I am still very much looking forward to continuing the Children of Time series soon. If you've read Cage of Souls, I would love to discuss it with you down below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.